All right, good morning. It is February the 7th, 2023. And uh, we're starting off with the gardenia. Mm -hmm. I mean the... <laughs> Camellia. Camellia. I keep getting that mixed up. <laughs> you see, this thing's opening now. And we did notice something interesting here. The, uh, the blooms are opening to the west. Well, you can see the sun's coming up over here. This one's straight up. But it looks like these guys want to be oriented towards the west. I don't know if that's true with all of them, but it seems to be a general consensus that they're wanting to open up in this direction. All right, that, that is the beauty of the camellia bush, shrub, tree. All right, this morning... We're gonna go over here and get the uh, get the archery session going, and uh, I've got a subject that I want to talk to you about this morning. That is uh, gonna tip you off. It is called the theory of opposites. Now I kind of thought this came to me just to me that after I got to thinking about it I realized that Solomon talked about it and in his dissertation in the Bible he said basically there's a time for everything there's a time for war there's a time for peace there's a time for being born and there's a time to die well it just so happens that those things are opposites so i call this when i do get around to talking about it i'm going to shoot a little bit first the theory of opposites it is a difficult concept but i think that it has relevance maybe to help people understand why things are as they are let me shoot a little bit first, but I'll tell you the, the biggie that a lot of people say they don't want to believe in God because of this, and that is why would a good God allow suffering and death? The theory of opposites. You may have already figured it out, but I'll try to get into it after I shoot. I'm going to try to put 20 in the pipe plate, and this is from scratch. No warm-up, no nothing, using the gap method. Ooh, I hit the middle then. I have to concentrate to do this. Now, I did hit my glasses then, and I'll put that in another place. Even though I drew it on my glasses, I still managed to keep my cool. That's one in a row. I think I hit it, but it didn't make a noise because I think I hit the uh, one of the holes that was already there. We'll see when I get up. Same thing, I hit it, but I hit it in a hole, I think. Didn't make a good noise. You know, this gets harder and harder. The more you get in there, the more chances you have to mess up. got a grouping going over there that's slightly left, left of center, but I think they're in the pie plate. So I aimed a little bit more to the right and I did pull that one over from the left hand quadrant of the pie plate.
Ooh, I jerked a little bit then, but I heard it hit the plate. Still, I think I'm still on, on. Mm, I jerked on that one, but I still hit it. I'm a jerk, it looks like. I hit it, but it was, I'm having a little trouble. I'll tell you one thing that's happening. I shoot 12 arrows now, and it actually begins to get hard to pull when you shoot 12 in a row. And I think that's what's happening. And I tend to grip the string with the very tips of my fingers. And it's hard to hold the string when you do that. Sometimes you need to get a little bit more hook on it. But I like to just hold it. Shoot 12 times in a row, your fingers start getting tired. All right, now. This is my last one. And if I am correct, I have a little trouble seeing the arrows at this distance, but... I believe that this is the one that's going to define my round. I hit it. Let's go see what happened. Did I get 12 in a row? All right. 12 shots, 12 hits. You pull out the outliers. These, these that have gone, they hit, but these are the ones that I jerked. Okay. Now I'm going to take this one. This one right here, I jerked also. It still hit it. Now we're going to take one more outlier, and this is my grouping right here. All of them hit. Now that's a pretty much of a, a milestone for me, hitting all of them. Now, let me get these arrows out of here. I'm going to try to get into this subject of the theory of opposites, and I'm going to also try to tell you why the ones that hit that I had. Now there's the real, the real grouping right there. That's five of them in the dead center. And the more I do this, the more I should get more consistent. And shooting 12 arrows, I do think it's a good idea. Because it really builds the strength of your fingers. Okay, let me get up, let's get over here in the shade a little bit. Let me, let me talk a little bit about this theory of opposites. Let me get... I might want to shoot an arrow, too, every now and then. Years ago, I hate, I'm going to have to tell you how this started. Years ago, believe it or not, I used to do stuff that I shouldn't do. One of the things was drugs. I used to take or do drugs and my drug of choice was pot at one time in my life I thought it was the greatest thing in the world I even remember saying to myself I'm gonna do this I'm gonna be doing this till the day that I die I did so much that it backfired on me my brain became saturated with that stuff. And I had what is referred to as a drug-induced schizophrenic episode. In other words, I would just describe it as being scared witless. 
And at that time, what I became scared of was death. An unhealthy fear of death. And I immediately had to resort to what little Christian belief I had at that time. And it was the Lord's Prayer. Now, I learned the Lord's Prayer at my football. It was a common practice back in those days in, in this part of the country to take a knee and re the whole team recite the Lord's Prayer before a football game. I knew it by heart. And when I was experiencing this very scary event in my life, I started saying the Lord's Prayer. I hadn't yet come to Jesus, by the way. Not like I did later when I really understood who He was. I just kept saying it over and over and over and just, just, it was rough. It was rough, I'm telling you, and you guys that have been through that know what I'm talking about. And uh, slowly but surely, I began to come around. This is, this took months to get back on my, you know, get it back together. But so a thought came to me why, this is the question, why would God allow death? Why would He do that if He's a good God? And the thought came to me at that time, I'll call it the theory of opposites. And this is what it sounds like or sounded like to me. You like life? Or asking myself, do I like life? Well, guess what? Life cannot actually exist without death in the mortal person. Death defines what life is. How can you say something is alive if you don't have such a thing as being dead. And likewise, how can you say something be dead if you don't have something that's alive? And what that did to, for me was to say, you have to have death. And I accepted that then as the answer that God gave me. The theory of opposites. Okay, and let's take another one. I'm, I, this is a hard subject to, to talk about, but I'll say another one. Sorrow. And many people chide with God about that. Why would God allow suffering if He's a good God? Well, what's the opposite of suffering? Well, I couldn't come up with a word I, I say not suffering, but we jumped on the internet and looked it up. What is the opposite of suffering? Well, the opposite of suffering is joy. All right? Let's see who this is driving by. Who is that? Uh, apparently one of our customers that's coming down there to get a little woodworking done or buy some lumber or something like that. So we looked it up. The opposite of suffering is joy. Now who is it that promised us his joy? Well that was none other than Yeshua the Messiah, also known as Jesus Christ. I give you my joy, he said. And that's the opposite of suffering. Joy. He came to give us joy. He came to take our suffering away. And that's on a broad scale, the whole earth. And the way that you get that joy 
It doesn't mean that you're not going to have a broken leg sometime. That's a different kind of suffering. You can deal with a broken leg. I've said this. This is a saying. I don't think I'm the only one that ever said it, but I'll say this. I would rather have a broken leg than a broken mind. Joy is a function of your thinking, not a function of your body. We know what the bodily functions are. Broken leg, that's the body. But a broken mind is a whole different thing. All right, so that's very crude, a very crude uh, explanation of what I'm trying to tell you this morning. But if you get into that um, state where you're saying, why would God allow these things? Then the fact is that they, they have to be. It has to be. How can you have life if you don't have death? How can you have death if you don't have life? I hope that helped. I hope that will spur some discussion. That's the whole idea of what I'm talking about is to try to spur some discussion. And my number one mission is to declare the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Savior of the world, also known as Jesus Christ. All right, this is Gardner Israel signing off.